Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. In this video, we are going to discuss the roast jokes that Marlena of this season of The Bachelor released on her social media, the ones that were left on the cutting room floor from this past week five group date episode of The Bachelor, where Russell Peters, Canadian comedian, hosted a roast. Well, we're going to share with you what Marlena actually said and uh, has since deleted, and we'll have a general discussion about that. Now, there is obviously going to be uh, some sensitive issues to talk about here regarding um, some Asian stereotypes and and some other stereotypes. We'll get into all of that. I'll share with you guys my opinion on the matter. I do have a sort of very specific knowledge about some of this stuff. Not an expert. A lot of my friends uh, have been hired to write roast jokes, and I've performed myself in many different roast battles, which are um, basically like a one-on-one -on -one roast jokes where you roast somebody, they roast you back. It goes back and forth in front of a panel of judges, in front of a live audience. Pretty wild stuff. It's a, It was a phenomenon that started several years ago. Now, roasting has existed for a while. The Friars Club, they've done these roasts for a long time. But roast battling started several years ago at the Comedy Store, which is a comedy club in Los Angeles. I was there last night to see Aziz Ansari perform. And their... It's, it's, it's fascinating because the roast battle started when two different comics wanted to fight each other because they didn't like each other. They had beef. And someone said, why don't you guys roast each other? You can fight each other with your words. And that began this huge culture, which became a Comedy Central show and all these different things. Plenty of friends have made a good living writing roast jokes. Now, they say you only roast those that you love. Uh, not always the case here on The Bachelor. Uh, comedy's not easy. Now, we're going to watch Marlena try comedy and I personally don't like to watch bad comedy uh, because it just makes me want to take a shower afterwards. It's like, ugh. You know what I mean? It's not easy. Public speaking is one of the uh, biggest fears in the world. And making something funny, not as easy as it looks. But we all think we can do it because we all can speak. And when you can speak, you go, I can do that. I can't play guitar, so I know I can't be a rock star. But I can speak, so I could make a laugh. I've made people laugh before. Now, the question is, how do you get to do it on command? How do you make something universal? How do you make something bulletproof in the sense that it's funny? And also, in today's world, in 2022, and for the last several years, people are asking the like sort of moral questions. How can you punch up, not punch down? And by that, I mean, how do you make fun of something that's not... Uh, blatant racism. How do you make fun of something that's not just hacky stereotypes? Because we know now, if you go to a comedy show and you hear the comic on stage be like, women be like this, but men be like that. So-and-so can't drive. Oh my God. You know what I mean? You go, oh boy, give me an original premise. Airline food's the worst. Okay. What else? What else you got? So we're going to watch some hacky stand up, uh, or I should say roast, and then we'll discuss it. And I'll share the comments that I made and then the comments of mine that were completely taken apart. And then I'm going to share my comments again because I'm not afraid to share my point of view. We're going to watch this. It's going to be tough to see. I don't stand by what she's saying uh, in her roast, but I also understand her attempt was for funny and boy, did she miss. So again, and there's this thing that happens where when we, you know, it's like my channel is built on just discussing these topics. We discuss these things. And what we saw with Shanae as the villain this past live stream is that we discussed how could she possibly be saying what she's saying? How could she be doing what she's doing? And we, we, st we try to get in the mind of her. And it's like, we have this idea that by getting into the mind of somebody, by trying to understand why Marlena would have uploaded that, we start to say like, oh, we're being sympathetic. We're defending them. No, 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 no. Stop that right there. We need to live in a world where we can have these conversations and not wonder what side we're taking. But unfortunately on Reddit, in other uh, social media forums, we get these pylons. Oh, we're all on this side. And I just reject that. And I got some private messages from people that clearly are afraid to state their opinions because they're afraid to be on the wrong side. But there is no right or wrong side when you look at something like this. There's just the side of saying, oh boy, that was in poor taste. Oh boy, that person, she should apologize. Um, she probably shouldn't have put herself in that situation. You know what I mean? So we'll get into it. Um, but I look forward to seeing how my comments are twisted uh, now. Uh, um, all right, so here's the, here's the initial roast that kind of uh, made waves, and then we'll play the full uh, length one. <laughs> Sarah. And again, so if I, I'm sorry, I apologize if I'm not being very articulate here. It's just a sensitive topic, and I'm no expert. But these are the roast jokes Marlena wrote that were left on the cutting room floor that didn't make it on TV. A little Asian, but Asian, okay? 
right, one thing's for certain and two things for damn sure. If Clayton ends up with Sarah, at least we know he gonna get a happy ending. <laughs> All right, so the attempt at her punchline there is to equate Asians to happy endings because uh, Asian massage parlors, um, the, the hacky stereotype would be that you get a, you get a happy ending at the end. Uh, obviously, there's a over-sexualization of, uh, of Asian women, you know, and I'm going to use these terms right now, but the terms that we've seen used in Hollywood scripts and we've also seen used as punchlines, the uh, sucky, sucky... Um, uh, love me long time. These type these types of uh, sayings that would people would use to to say, oh, Asians are this certain way, or Asian women are infantilized, or Asian women are sexualized. And we know that there's a sex trafficking issue uh, when it comes to uh, some of the issues that we have here with happy endings that are at massage parlors. These people are, for the most part, not operating on their free will, and we that's a whole different subject that needs to be addressed. So definitely, definitely not something. That should be a punchline to a joke. Um, so we'll go through here. And then some people had said this on the patronation.scoop page. She deleted uh, this this TikTok after the backlash. The rest, uh, I need the rest of this video. People said, where's the rest of this? So people want to feast on this, which I can understand. Curiosity killed the cat, right? We all want a rubberneck. I don't know if you know the term rubberneck. It's when there's traffic on a highway because everyone stops to see with a rubberneck the accident that just happened and it can lead to all this pileup. We like to do that. And I understand that's just humanity, right? So everyone's going, I want to see more. I need more. I need more. This is the gladiator. Like we just need more blood, which is just a problem that we have in society. But this is exactly what it is. So here's and here's the trailer ready from the actual episode. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Russell. Peter. So they do the whole like they got the music. Welcome back to the roast. And it's like, listen. Good, good roasting still doesn't belong on certain TV programs because it's brutal. But also, some comics might take 15, 20, 30 years before they perfect a joke, and others, even 30 years into stand-up, will still mess up. We'll jump forward here to Patrice O'Neill. Patrice O'Neill is one of my favorite comedians of all time. He died like seven or eight years ago of a stroke. He's one of the ba uh, one of the greatest comics that kind of never made it to his full potential. And uh, a lot of his comedy is available on YouTube if you want to check it out. Uh, good comedy like his will break down social constructs. It'll break down racism, stereotypes, and it'll use laughter to wedge people into his perspective, and he's absolutely absolutely brilliant. So if he's so brilliant, I think it's worth listening to what he has to say about it all. The attempt is what I'm trying to fight for. The joke may or may... Funny jokes and unfunny jokes come out of the same birth. You don't know if anything is going to be funny. You should attempt to be able to make anything funny. Now here's the problem, Marlena. She's not a stand-up comedian, okay? So an attempt to make things funny, it's like someone attempting to make fireworks go off, but they end up blowing off their hands. She blew off her metaphorical hands by trying to make jokes when she didn't have the tools to know where the boundaries are and all the other aspects of that joke. It's dangerous stuff. So I'm going to play for you guys the rest of the roast, but I'll read, I'll read my comments first from Reddit. Now, these aren't the most uh, well-articulated comments. I wrote it literally right before I went to a stand-up show last night, but I, but I also knew it would be taken out of place. And this is why I probably should not be writing these things on Reddit because it's um, it's like a baseless... The, the way conversations happen on Reddit, it's just people want to... It's a feeding frenzy. It's a popularity contest. So this so this statement... And by the way, I believe in the four agreements, one of them which is being impeccable with your word. So I could probably find better ways to say this, but I'll read this statement. Comedy is dangerous. And I don't mean that in a way where she should be able to make whatever jokes she wants. Why are they trying to do roast jokes if they aren't trained to know how to toe the line, you know? If the group date was flying a plane, we wouldn't be surprised if she crashed the plane because she's not a pilot and she doesn't know how to fly a plane. And guess what? She's not a comic and she doesn't know how to write a roast joke. I see comics go too far every day trying to be funny. It doesn't make it right. Just most people learn when they went too far without millions watching. It's an interesting story. I'm kind of glad for her sake no one has a video of it. They do now. I think she genuinely was excited to show off that she is funny. So I truly believe she... Because let's, let's, let's put ourselves in her shoes for a second here. Do you think she posted something? And this happens all the time. This happens all the time. It doesn't make it right. But do you think she posted something wanting to get canceled, wanting to get publicly shamed, wanting to get ostracized. This is my theory, and this is what I think happened. She read her set, 
in front of the audience on The Bachelor and everyone's like ready to laugh. They got the assistant directors trying to get everyone to clap and hey, keep the energy up. This will be fun. She did her set. She got laughs. That's my guess is that she got a lot of laughs and she felt really good about that. And maybe she does want to be a comic or maybe she does want to show off her personality. And she goes, oh man, you know, and then maybe she, after several months, this is happened several months ago. And again, is it a dangerous place for me to speculate? I don't, I don't think so. She goes, oh, that dopamine rush I got from doing the standup. I want to show people what they missed out on. And then she does. And I equated this to when I was eight years old and um, li living in Rhode Island in the winter, I tried to clean my mom's car off. There was ice on the car. I tried to clean it off with a garden hoe. You know, it had a sharp end to it. I'll use a garden hoe. And I was so excited to show my mom that I, that I cleaned her car off at eight years old. It's a true story. And she was like, oh my, what the hell? Dave, no. And I was like, I cleaned your car off. Scrape marks everywhere, this and that, right? So my intention was good, but boy, was I off. So then this was the response. Racism is still racism. You can't be dangerous and toe the line in comedy without making jabs at the expense of those who are marginalized and oppressed. Like, what is even the point of that when these people are being killed for just existing? These types of jokes contribute to the Asian hate that has become widespread in the past couple of years. Well, I don't disagree that this, that this contributes to Asian hate. Um, uh, so then we jump forward to, of course, my quotes being taken and, and, and sliced up. Ugh, at Dave Neal defending this, wasn't defending, by saying comedy is dangerous. And again, I will, I will die on this hill. Defending versus explaining or speculating on why something might have happened is completely different. And we, and we need to embrace that in society. Racist jokes should not be applauded, didn't applaud, or excused for being dangerous. That's bullshit. Now, I said comedy is dangerous. And if, and if I'm going to be impeccable with my words, I'm going to expect others to be that as well. However, I do very much appreciate the post. And I said, I specifically did not say that. And then the person below says, quotes himself below as saying comedy is dangerous, head plant. All right, we're going to read it again. I said, comedy is dangerous. And I don't mean that in a way where she should be able to make fun of the jokes. Uh, what, so, so the point being, you guys already heard me read it, is that immediately... A paragraph or two of what I said is then cut down to, oh, uh, Dave's defending it by saying comedy's dangerous. No, not on my watch. You can do that all day you want on Reddit, but I'm just going to have to talk about this, okay? Not on my watch. So uh, then the person underneath said, well, a lot of comedy is really, really bad and dumb. I agree. Especially amateur roast comedy. I doubly agree. But I don't know if this is comparable to actual comedy, which is my point. They're going for jokes, right? And the roast. Roast jokes are it's, com it's a form of comedy, right? It's a tool in comedy. Uh, a lot of times you can pre-prepare roast jokes or if someone heckles you, you can start making fun of their shoes or their Hawaiian uh, t-shirt or their stupid haircut. You can do whatever you want in the stand-up show. The audience can decide to groan. They can decide to laugh. You can hold that gavel. You can be the judge in, the ju in, the, the judge in charge of that, uh, that courtroom, which is a comedy club, right? So again, if, if I come off a little bit defensive, it's because those aren't my words. Yes, I said... Comedy is dangerous, but you can't just, and this is what we do. This is what we do all the time. We take the word somebody says and we put it in quotes and then we reformat it to fit our narrative. Racist, jo um, racist jokes should not be applauded or excused for being dangerous. I didn't say racist jokes are dangerous. I said comedy is dangerous. Okay. And Marlena blew her hands off metaphorically by playing with the fireworks known as comedy. And that's not me being punk rock and being, oh, you know, uh, it's so edgy. Well, listen, we live in a time where a lot of comics get to work their material out and realize what is too far and what is not. I mean, like I said, last night I watched Aziz and Sorry uh, do jokes about the N-word um, in front of a full audience of, of, of a very diverse crowd from all over the world. And he's not going to be criticized for that set until he releases it in an album or if somebody leaks the videotape. And it's almost like if you go to a preview for a Broadway show, say you want to see Miss Doubtfire on, Mrs. Doubtfire on Broadway, right? You might want to go to a preview for the show. Well, Variety can't write a review of that show until they're done with previews and have the live performance because they're not going to write the preview. Um, they're not going to write the review when they're still working out their kinks. All right? Now, Marlena... She's the one who uploaded the set herself. Uh, and a lot of comments say, you know, ABC did her a favor by not airing that. And then she shot herself in the foot. Marlena believed she was giving us all this gift of comedy. And she was wrong. And she was wrong. 
But don't but but I'm not going to let anybody say that I'm defending it because I'm explaining what actually went down. No, that's just not that I mean by all means, clip this up, post it whatever which way you want on Reddit, do whatever you guys want to do. But not on my watch. So I got private messages from people just being like, "You know what, Dave? Keep 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 uh keep giving up keep giving your opinions." You know what I mean? Because they know they know kind of how how just sort of um all over the place people are with the pitchforks that they have. Now, it doesn't make it right. But again, so let's let's watch what let's uh let's just finish this off by seeing the rest of what Marlena said. Again, this is tough to watch because it's like, yeah, there might be a joke or two in there, but it's like, oh, it's pretty cringy. And also stand-up comedies in roasting is supposed to be done in front of a group of people. I mean, I will sh I will share with you guys though. Uh, like if you didn't see this earlier, the roast jokes I wrote, which I can defend every single one of them uh, when it came to the reel that I did for Katie Thurston. Now, this is a lot easier because Katie Thurston's a white contestant who everyone was upset with at the time, right? So um, I'll go down to my roast joke, wherever it is here. And, uh, and um, geez, where the hell would it be? Um, I'll, have to, I'll have to find it. And uh, you can kind of see the difference between like having a sharp punchline versus, um, you know, ver versus kind of what she did, which is just find a bunch of very common um, stereotypes and and sort of rode the stereotype versus, you know, I guess the difference between riding the stereotype is finding a unique play of words that would um, be able to... Um, shatter whatever the assumption the audience has because that's what it comes down to is the audience having an assumption of what you're going to say and then you say something different so just very quickly i'm going to play what i would consider a good roast which is me roasting katie and john hersey if you don't roast me and john it's truly a missed opportunity from katie thurston let's roast all right this is katie and john at the people's choice awards katie tried on about a dozen different looks before settling on this one but enough about john hersey John said this was the suit he wore when Katie dumped him. So be careful if Katie suggests you wear that outfit to dinner anytime soon. <laughs> Just kidding. Katie won't dump you in person. All right, folks. That's a Blake joke. So obviously the pacing, putting the punchline at the end of the sentence, going for low-hanging fruit, it's all there. It's pretty harmless. John, what's with the suit? Are you dating Katie or giving her advice on what cryptocurrency to buy? All joking aside, you both look beautiful and uh, you're both having fun at the People's Choice Awards. But if the people had their choice, John, they'd go with a tie that matched Katie's outfit. All right, so we use the People's Choice Awards and the transitionary word is choice. And if people had their choice, you got, you see what's going on here? It's really wordplay and linguistics more than anything. Speaking of Katie's outfit, that dress looks like a bejewel gun shot up a rainforest cafe. Look at Katie's teeth. They're so white, you can see the privilege that got her cast as the Bachelorette in the first place. All right, folks, you like that? You don't run. All right, so that's it, right? That's it. That's 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 me having done stand-up for 10 years, no expert, but that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. With those roast jokes, it took me about 25 minutes to write because I was very aware of their, them both and the things that would make their them tick. Now, here's Marlena. Probably I've never done stand-up. God bless this mess. This is Rachel. Rachel got fake lips, fake tits, Botox, chin, cheeks, and forehead. I hate to break it to you, Clayton, but a personality ain't real either. My good sis, Eliza. Y'all, Eliza is so pretty. Her makeup is always perfect, and her hair is always flawless. She doesn't talk too much and doesn't really offer any opinions. It's actually kind of crazy. I didn't know The Bachelor casted mannequins. Yeah. And who the hell is this chick? Just a disclaimer that no Bachelor contestant was hurt in the making of this video and that all contestants did approve of this message. Thank you. Ugh. Teddy. All Teddy does is mope and cry around the house by how she ain't had a one-on-one -on -one yet with Clayton. I hate to break it to you, sweetie, but you probably ain't gonna get one. Shit, hell, I ain't gonna get one either. I'm laughing for the wrong reasons. So, people say that Mara kind of favors Eva Longoria from Desperate Housewives, right? I'll tell you one thing. Yeah, she does look that bitch is all desperate and definitely not a housewife. 
I do like the all right. I do like <laughs> the idea of playing on the word desperate. Uh, 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 she looks like uh, Eva Longoria from Desperate Housewives. Uh, seeing how she didn't get a uh, uh, the first impression, Rose. We at least know she's a she's desperate, but will never be his housewife. Okay, you know what I mean. We just did something there. Okay, we're working on this for you. But yeah, here we go. We already <laughs> showed. We already showed Who that one. Yeah, <laughs> I think Susie got the wrong man. I think the bitch forgot she killed Jack Dawson in the ocean a hundred years ago. <laughs> this girl, Serene. Clayton couldn't find love on his season, so he brought off brand Michelle to ours. Look. That's, there's, there might be something to work with there. I'm going to use your throwback pick for this one, Jesse, because you look kind of good at this. But yeah, they should have roasted Jesse, the mo Jesse and Clayton the most. Like That would have been the easiest pick, obviously. I ain't going to lie. Jesse was season five's bachelor and failed at keeping love. So he moved on to host season 26 with his stunt dummy. Okay. There's something there. All right. So again, the point isn't to defend her. The point is to say, listen, I understand. I understand a flop. I understand a bomb. And we can talk all we want about the bad judgment for her to upload it. And we can also walk and chew gum at the same time, feel and, and discuss uh, the sort of danger with some of these tropes. Uh, with that said, I'm not making any defenses for her, guys. We're just looking at somebody who, like, like, uh, we're, let's go back to her. She, she, you know, she dressed up, right? Let me, let me show this. Like, like she dressed up. She put on, she put on her outfit, did her makeup. She got ready and 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 recorded this and uploaded it and thought she was being funny. And of course, that's not the case. Now. When Patrice O'Neill talks about uh, the funny and unfunny comes from the same birth, he's talking about usually professional comedians who have already worked their things out, usually at bottom of the barrel basements and attics and back rooms on sticky floors in the middle of the night. I mean, comics are not appreciated until they're really, really good. You're an intern until you're a CEO. It's a heavy topic. Uh, it's hard to toe the line of what's funny versus what's offensive. And Marlena didn't do it. But I am also not judging her as being a comedian. I think the style of putting a roast on the show is just, you know, it's for lack of sounding extra redundant. It's just it, they're, they're creating really, really tough situations, especially in today's climate. And it's almost like villains on the show, right? They can't make you say anything, but they can create a scenario in which you're going to dig your own grave. Marlena did just that. I'd love to know what you guys have to say about this. Please leave a comment and I look forward to uh, hearing back from you guys. All right. We'll talk to you in a little bit. Content coming all day long. Bye everybody.